welcome to a WOW podcast, obviously, episode number... 11. 11. 11. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome everyone. Welcome to the show. Let me find the camera. Yeah, it's find us. Hello. We're here. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome. It's lovely to be here. Um, and uh, lovely to have you here as well. And it's not just you that's here, Evie. Oh, it's not just me? No, today we have Is a, there a special guest. Do you remember the last special guest we got on? Our good friend Garrett. Yes, I do. Who I enjoyed our time with immensely. But oh, everyone I was like, do. why did you invite Garrett on? He doesn't even like WOW. <laughs> he hates WOW. Why did you do that? Why did you invite him on? <laughs> You're ruining your podcast by having Garrett on who hates WOW. Even though he had a lot of very nice things to say about WOW and some he very did. insightful he things loves to say wow. about WOW. No, exactly. Like we ran a WOW podcast the game. together for, for a long, long time. But no, it's not just us. Uh, and we won't keep you waiting any longer because we have um, a, an absolute stonker of a, a guest on today. We have, from Folding Ideas, Dan Olsen. Hey. He is placed above me. I'm so excited. Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> where, where did he go? Hold on. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show, Dan. Um, I'm just going to wait until the chat tells me uh, whether you're picking up on the uh, the, the mics or not and right, you're right. recording. Yeah. But uh, I'm confident. I'll, I'll, give them, I'll give them some audio to, to grab on to. Uh, hey, cats. No. Leave each other alone. Oh. Go find couches to sit on and just fall asleep. You've been fed. <laughs> That's exactly how I talk to my children. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, exactly so, it's so similar. Oh, you. <laughs> Except then they start crying. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I, I feel guilt <laughs> instantly. Like it, that's that's the thing about being a parent. And um, I don't know. I, I only ever had a cat when I was a kid, so I don't know what it's like as a grown up. But you know, there's that thing of juggling that that tightrope of constantly kind of finding them annoying, um, and then guilt at finding them annoying and overcompensating right, right. them with like immense love that you know to compensate for the guilt for the annoyance that you never even expressed to them but uh you felt so are you talking about your children or your ex-girlfriends no, right now because <laughs> um, um no I, t I totally feel that um however our children do not come on camera but dan your cats are definitely welcome on camera oh yeah any old time um, I'm just saying it's too it's I I didn't I didn't bring any of the production lights out into the basement so it's just <laughs> like it's like a cave down here there's like a I'm I'm beneath my single bare light bulb you know <laughs> writing manifestos <laughs> and uh, uh, angry letters to the government yeah uh, so for those of you um, who don't uh, know about Dan Olson he is uh, one of our favorite YouTubers a big I want to say a big YouTube inspiration, but then it makes it sound like we we try and make our videos like Dan Olson's videos, which, uh, I mean, you know, secretly deep down, that's exactly what happens. That's every video I make, every kind of like, wow, essay talking about the trading post or people being angry about, you know, the store mounts or something like that. What I'm secretly thinking in my head is, you know, this is a proper Dan Olson analysis, breakdown, yeah, dissection. like a profound cultural critique. Exactly. Yeah. Except um, so, we're talking it about it never quite comes yeah. out that way, but that's on purpose. I, I want you to know that's entirely on purpose. I, I mean, absolutely that's... could. <laughs> I could do it. I mean, a lot of a, a lot of mine are are that way as well. Where I'll start inspired by like somebody else's uh, somebody else's voice, somebody else's. It's like you you see somebody else doing something, you're like, oh man, like I wish I could do that. And you try to find like your own way of doing it, and uh, and maybe it comes out a little janky at first, but. Uh, perfectly valid creative uh, 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 creative outlet. So, um, so you've been uh, on YouTube for an incredibly long time. Um, 14 I've, years? That's insane. Wow. And what inspired wow. you to kind of jump into the space and get started? So prior to YouTube, okay, so so I went to film school. Um, like, you know, it, it's a film school proper, Southern Alberta Institute of Technology. I was in the, uh, the film and video production uh, production pipeline which is it's so it's a trade school and the film program is is very much designed around like preparing students to sort of feed directly into the alberta film industry which is sort of this like film service industry a lot of stuff shoots up here but it's all like cowboy movies from the states you know legends of the fall uh river runs through it unforgiven uh uh broke back you know all stuff like that so you just listed so all my favorite movies well, that's... 
Uh, you, you know, we had uh, Last of Us up here uh, uh, two years ago. No, longer. When did they shoot that? Time oh, is nice. meaningless. Anyway, um, so I, I did that program. And, you know, when I was in college, coincided with, like, with, with YouTube becoming a platform. And so everybody had kind of had this sense that, like, web-specific content, like, thing. So not just stuff repurposed for the web and not just home videos and and like random one-off sort of like America's funniest home videos kind of kind of content. Everybody knew that like stuff created for the internet was was an inevitability, right? We had already seen it in text for like you know, we already had a decade of people doing it in text with uh uh blogs and websites and 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 etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, multimedia was just a matter of once there was enough bandwidth, uh, once computers, like once home computers were powerful enough, uh, it, it was going to bust wide open, but nobody knew what form it was going to take. Nobody knew what was really going to like find an audience. Um, and so I was, uh, I was paying a lot of attention to it and you had sort of the, early success of things like AVGN and, um, Oh dang it! I can't remember the name of it. It's not the guild, the precursor to the guild, which was this series of movies released directly to the internet about a. Anyway, um, so so like web specific content was a thing I was paying attention to. Uh, that guy with the glasses kind of takes off, and we get this whole like AVGN derivative reviewer sort of environment and red letter media and whatnot and at this time my first job out of college was working at a high school as a as a subject matter expert in in so i was i was the av tech and sub and SME. SME. <laughs> sme so the sme i was the uh i was the <laughs> av tech and the sme for all of the all of the multimedia uh so uh, if, if students needed to, uh, needed help with like video cameras or premiere or Photoshop or, or whatever, I was the, I was the contact point for that. And I would like teach them how to do it. Um, but I wasn't like, but I'm, I'm, I'm not a licensed teacher. So I would like instruct classes, but I can't give grades, um, is sort of the, the differentiation there. But so right at this time, you know, we've got this wave of like, the the internet can do video now and of course this is when facebook uh started their infamous pivot to video that wound up being a huge fraud um and killed cracked uh <laughs> r.i.p but uh i'm i i'm i'm jumping super fast through like <laughs> <laughs> Six years of internet history here just to get to uh, just to get. So so in this environment, I was watching a lot of web video. I was watching a lot of the reviews. I was I, I was absorbing all of this media criticism that was online and I saw holes in it. Um, I just saw that there was like there were there were angles that weren't being covered. In particular, there was like there was very much kind of derivative from AVGN and uh, and that guy with the glasses, this approach to film criticism of just like whenever something unusual happens of just getting like angry or confused or both <laughs> uh and and a lot of that was performative but at the same time it was just kind of this default that is like if something strange happened you could rely on uh on angry confusion as kind of red meat for your audience and as somebody with actual like training in film uh, and and experience on on film sets and and uh, whatnot. I I was l looking at this and going, it's like no, no no, but like but there's a reason why it wound up that way. There's there's this very specific like you know the the uh, pressures of creating a movie have aligned in such a way that like th this is the decision that they made, and the story of how this wound up turning out bad is interesting like why is the thing the way that it is and it's like and you can create entertaining content by like getting fantastically angry at something being confusing and bad but there's also a really interesting story in actually just telling the truth 
about like how did it end up this way why why is it uh why 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 um and so i saw that as kind of this uh this hole that there wasn't uh that there weren't there wasn't really anyone at the time in 2010 um kind of taking it seriously taking it at uh at at face value and and approaching things a little bit more pragmatically so i decided that there was a hole that that i could attempt to to fill and decided to uh uh throw my hat in the ring and and create a channel and then i didn't make a second video until 2011 uh <laughs> what was that first video i should have looked this up i should have made this my oh research. so the first the first video uh was was just about memes like the the dawkins original uh original sort of idea and it's 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 a very very short sort of just thing on semiotics and and memes and how um you know like tv evolved where uh y you know like the the thesis some of which hasn't aged great uh was um how who wants to be a millionaire uh created jersey short right, right. <laughs> yeah and just sort of this chain of like it's like okay this thing was a success and then something with like overlapping uh you know so so who wants to be a millionaire creates <laughs> a a uh primetime game show boom in the primetime game show boom you uh survivor uh which has like dna a whole bunch like from a whole bunch of other places around uh 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 around entertainment like survivor's a big hit and then survivor makes like allows for big brother to be a hit and then big brother creates a uh niche for a so parallel to this, you've got the OC, and then you end up with the Synthesis show, which is Big Brother plus the OC, which is Real Housewives of Orange County. And 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 then that ends up with a spin-off on the East Coast, and then that ends up with a spin-off, which is Jersey Shore. That's incredible. Wild. And, yeah, and completely it's completely yeah. right. <laughs> and it's like, and that's just how how, you know, the the how fads and and whatnot like happen and it, it's just it's a short little video and there's uh there's some some details in there that i there, there's a couple jokes in there that i wouldn't tell if i were remaking it but uh yeah <laughs> yeah i've got a lot of videos like that i think the first um piece of your work that i came across myself was um your video that, uh, analyzing a scene from the movie rent um uh being a theater kid myself right I, I i stumbled across this and i i looked it up just again the other day and i think that was nine years ago now that video as well um, oh it probably was yeah, yeah. I, guess, I guess it must have been um and it, it, it just kind of you know got me down the rabbit hole of, of your videos and I'd, I'd pop in um and if i saw a new upload I'd, I'd come and check it out and you went through that amazing kind of purple patch a few years ago where uh you you got into a certain kind of video that, where you looked at sort of the book of henry and uh suicide squad the editing in suicide squad and things like that and I think actually thinking about it, I made a joke at, at the beginning of the show, but I think that somewhere deep down, I was trying to kind of emulate that that kind of video. And there was a moment where we first started getting into the cinematic analysis videos mm -hmm. where, you know, my my grasp of, of uh, kind of analysis and critique and, and understanding of things is incredibly low. Um, uh, and and that's where I pitched those those uh, cinematic analysis videos, and I was so glad when they started getting traction because it allowed me to live out my YouTube video essay kind of fantasies. I was like, look, to at least one or two people in this chat, I am Dan Olson, and that makes me feel pretty great. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but then it came as a, a massive surprise uh, when you released your classic video. Um, uh, everything we left behind uh, when when WoW Classic mm. came out. So yeah, you yeah. that you are a huge WoW player. Yeah, I had been uh, since I've been playing WoW basically unbroken since since launch. Um, I it, it's kind of always in like the back of my mind of like, it's like oh like 
how do I, you know, and, and, and people have commented that, or people have noticed that like, I, multiple times, even prior to that video, I would use World of Warcraft as like a reference point for something. Um, so, so it would kind of get thrown in as like, not quite an Easter egg, but like if I needed a detail that, that wow was a good example of, I would, I would use it. And then when classic came out, um, you know, there was this whole rush and, uh, and Nathan, who's now my co-writer, uh, he, he was big on, uh, on the, uh, the, um, like private realms. He had a lot of private realm experience. And so he was, he was like, really forward thinking in terms of uh, in terms of it's like the specific ways in which classic was going to be unique um and so like so like the lineup for that one quest in duratar uh he's like it's like there's going to be a line like people are going to queue for it i'm like what do you mean people are going to queue for it like <laughs> no it's just going to be a giant cloud he's like no people are going to obey the social contract and queue for it there will be a line out the back of the cave and then sure enough, there was. Um, and uh, so so we spent a bunch of we spent a bunch of time in classic and um, and around level 40 or so, I was like, you know what, there's something like really, really interesting going on here. I'm noticing something in myself about like the way that I'm engaging with it that is very like th that is not inauthentic, but it is very, very different. I found that I was playing WoW in the same way that I would like play Final Fantasy uh like not not Final Fantasy 14 like Final Fantasy 12 you know you you pop it in and it's this big giant sprawling game with like hundreds of hours of like main quest and side quest and all of this stuff to do and and you know all this stuff to wander around and see but I was really approaching classic as effectively a finished game a like uh it's like here here's a packaged single player experience with a multiplayer uh with a multiplayer mode um and I thought that was really like I thought that was fascinating uh, to see in myself and as I started then like engaging with the with other people in the community and looking I saw that like I wasn't alone in that there were other people who were who were treating it that way I watched some streamers who uh, like I, I I sought out like really casual streamers to to just sort of like watch how they were playing the game and they were playing it in a very sort of similar way uh you know like it's like oh let's pop in like let's do a replay of final fantasy 7 which like the remake um was in the news at the time and, and i don't remember if it had come out yet but uh you know but like it was kind of like on everyone's mind this sort of uh uh sort of thing and so um but then also like i was playing a lot of bfa uh it was it was around the time that i had finally like really got into like mythic plus um as a as a format and was like you know taking it uh taking it like seriously and trying to get like all of the uh all the end of season rewards and and um nathan had convinced me to to try for at no um which to try for 1800 in uh in arena so in in twos um and so I was I was playing a ton of retail and at the time and had this really kind of great contrast between them in terms of like what are they doing as a game what are the differences between them and and I thought that was a really really interesting texture uh because because I knew that the sort of like this like launch experience of classic wasn't going to hold <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're we're in a really great sort of limited little like pocket here where everybody can feel a certain way about this thing and it is going to unfortunately disintegrate like once instrumentalism kind of sets in and it's going to set in very quickly and so I was like I was very conscious about like trying to get that video out at the perfect time where like the sentiment was still like in my favor and I could be a little bit wistful and sentimental about it and a little bit schmaltzy and just kind of, just kind of slide in the like, <laughs> and then it's all going to fall apart because it's a solved problem that people are going to approach a certain way. I just kind of um, slide that in at the end. And, uh, and then we wound up being a hundred percent correct. And we were able to be a little bit more brutal with that when we made the instrumental play video. And that was a perfect like follow on from it. And, and by kind of falling apart, um, 
kind of probably important to point out. You don't mean sort of like player numbers or anything like that, because Classic is still incredibly healthy and 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 yeah, it's great Classic business. is doing fine. Uh, I think like Classic Hardcore was a brilliant uh, was a brilliant product was a brilliant play on their part. I think I think Classic Hardcore um, manages to hit a sort of perfect synthesis between the instrumental play, like the 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 instrumental limitations of Classic and the things that appeal to people about Classic by basically turning it into a spectator sport you know you have this like column of of players and influencers who are willing to like engage with that instrumentalism and then you have thousands of people who are like you do you but i will watch because i know that at any time like this could go comically like bad and if it does then like all hell's gonna break loose and uh and so like i think that's been a an amazing sort of synthesis uh between uh between those like pressures i think that's a great um observation uh, that you made about it, it feeling like you're playing final fantasy when you when you play classic because i that's exactly the vibe that, that i get from it as well this idea that the longevity of classic and, and the reason it's still so popular now is yeah it is essentially you want an excuse to level up a new character from zero to to max and go through the same raids again and so any kind of sort of change that gives you a reason and an excuse to do that like hardcore like season of discovery is a really good thing and it is exactly like just whacking on mario 64 for your kind of like yearly play of it uh yeah. and, and you don't want it to be anything else anything apart from that but uh, it's it's a guaranteed play kind of like once a year or when a new expansion comes out or, or, or yeah. what have you but then the people who stick with it like they've got to deal with like gdkp and and like there's a whole bunch of like there's there's basically like two ways to play classic you either are a tourist who like pops in for your yearly your yearly play of ff7 or you're just this like utterly degenerate gdkp like instrumental to the max you know okay we're gonna we're gonna have like freshly primed characters sitting outside where the portal is eventually going to be patched in for this raid so that we can kill it like we can clear it within 12 minutes of the servers becoming accessible uh and and it's like it's it's a very wide gulf it's very interesting but like uh yeah you got to be a very specific sort of personality to really like have classic be your pillar game it's funny like you the way you say that it makes it sound difficult and to me it would be impossible to do that like the the amount of research and and investment in the game to play it like that would be you know it would be my life but i, I get the feeling that a lot of people that take up that position in, in the classic community it just comes at this stage because they spent so long because, on yeah. private servers and stuff it's essentially second nature i remember yeah. we were at a gaming bar with our guild once and uh, like mario kart 64 was was on one of the systems on the wall and our friend he picked it up and he was like yo i'm gonna do the shortcut i haven't played this game in like 20 years but i'm gonna i'm gonna do the shortcut on rainbow road and he just drifted off the edge and dropped like a hundred in-game feet onto another part of the track which you know is impossible it takes like immense skill and he did it was just in his muscle memory he just did it he could pick it up after 20 years he could just do it and that's what i get the feeling sort of like you know hardcore yeah, yeah, classic they, players are it's sort of and and you have to be that kind of character like you have to be that kind of player to to willingly step into <laughs> next ramus in in a hardcore environment like it's like okay so a bit of lag around around the slimes after patchwork and <laughs> welcome to duratar <laughs> uh you know so uh, yeah yeah it's it it is it is interesting and uh, uh i i'm i'm very glad classic hardcore exists because i will probably never play it but i enjoy <laughs> seeing the highlights yeah I'm, I'm like you i'm like i'm thrilled that they exist i'm really glad that they have their like their audiences and but also i just know i'm i'm it's not for me and it's never going to be for me like i'm i'm never going to be the like ultimate min maxer uh because that's just not my my gameplay style and i don't know if i'm ever going to be a tourist in classic either because 
I'm aware that there is this like other style of gameplay going on. Well, that's the thing. It kind of, it, it, it's almost impossible to be a tourist in classic at this time. Like, you know, when I picked up classic, uh, the first time I got really into it for the first couple of weeks, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'd never played vanilla. I'm not like you. I'm not a day one subscriber and player, Dan, but like, I was a day two. Oh, oh no way. Oh, oh fraud. <laughs> Absolute mean, depending fake. Depending on the time zone. I can't believe we invited depending him on this on, like, show. This is just, oh, you, we're going to get so much shit. <laughs> Well, I w okay, so like the funny story is I wasn't sure if I was going to do it because I was really worried about like, mm, do I want to sign up for a subscription thing? You that know? was a big and deal in those days, yeah. It was It was still a big deal. And uh, and then um, I got injured at work. I, I picked up a broken pot and sliced my hand open. <laughs> and so suddenly I had a workers' comp claim and a week of paid time off. Awesome. <laughs> and World of Warcraft had come out the day before, and so it's like, <laughs> so I like leave the clinic after getting my hand stitched up, and I'm like, Best Buy's right there. Yeah, I got some time off. I got some money in my I pocket. I got some time got off. <laughs> But like I, I when I started playing, I was like, "Yeah, man, I'm gonna get like the priest stuff. I'm gonna do all the things that you know I'd never have been able to do if I played it at the time. Because mm -hmm. now I know about it, and now I know what I've got to do. And, and it's all written. There. The guides are there. Right, I've yeah. got my ten thousand hours in WoW. Got my <laughs> five solid like in-game years yeah. in WoW. I like I, I'm, I'm a master at this game. I can I can do it. But it, it became very obvious very quickly that actually the the, the disparity, like the discrepancy between people that did go f like full in on that game mm -hmm. um and people that played it more casually was if anything i think like even higher the gulf is bigger between those two kinds of players than it is in retail oh, exactly. and, and you yeah. were just so behind so quickly that it just felt you know there hasn't been a day in in uh classic where i haven't felt like i was catching up you know and and it's mm. it's uh it's wild it's it, it kind of just i for me it shuts me out completely, but um, I, I love that the game exists. Are you still playing it? Classic? Yeah. Um, I, I I dip in every uh, uh, every now and then, but I haven't uh, I I haven't had a really big continuous play streak since uh, since since launch. Um, in part because like the, the solo experience isn't bad, but I need to be in a very specific mood for it and uh and the rest of my friends are are at this point like so dispersed through the uh the the classic ecosystem as a whole that like there's just kind of like i don't really have a group to to latch on to um i that that might change if the karazhan um uh was it karazhan crypts rumor ends up being true if they if that does end up being like new bespoke content specifically for season of discovery then i will i will probably go out of my way like specifically to uh uh to do that because then you it know it seems like season of discovery one, yeah. like yeah i mean season of discovery is really like it's really fun but i again i don't kind of have like a group to to really play it with so uh so it hasn't been able to hook me for long periods of time um but if there's like not just a fresh way of playing the game but like wholly new content like it's like hey here's yeah. here's something from 20 years ago like resurrected and actually sort of like finally finished after two decades like i i think that's special enough that i will i will go out of my way specifically to 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 do that that would um, be finally hitting like the classic plus sort of promise yeah. as well mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I think if anything, like it would be a really uh, it, it would be a really clever sort of way to like have a classic plus without having a classic plus, and that it's like, well, you know, we're not technically adding new content, yeah, specifically it's for all in classic. The files. It was always of, yeah. there. We just <laughs> we just moved some mobs into it. <laughs> Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Although there is there is uh, stuff in Season of Discovery that people have been sending me because I haven't been playing. I keep meaning to pick it up and I I just love the idea of it so much. But every time I actually log in, I just do like this big sigh and go back and do some Mythic Plus instead. And I, I wish and that's a fault of mine, not of the game, because it's incredible. Everyone's having a really good time with it. And and even worse, I think it's because there's the the 100 percent XP boost gain for uh under level 25 which is coming to effect next week yeah. mm -hmm. so it's that kind of thing where 
we're getting our kitchen done uh in a, in a couple of weeks the builders have been around they're like yo yeah we'll do this we'll do that and we're like nice one ah oh, boom awesome um <laughs> do a patreon video um and um there's that thing now because we know we're getting the kitchen done we're not really cleaning the kitchen and so it, you know if the hey, floor hey, gets speak, a bit messy it's yourself. like well i mean that floor's coming up in a couple of weeks <laughs> oh, yeah. isn't it do you know what i mean the big hole in the ceiling it's like well i mean we could fix it but you know I, they're doing a new ceiling in a couple of weeks so fine. just it's fine. it's fine it's like there's a rotting kind of cake or kind of roast chicken on the side it's All like right. yeah i mean technically very unhygienic or i could clean that up yeah. but a bunch of workmen are coming in is it gonna do it? Be a <laughs> yeah. giant they've got a skip trash bin outside of the yeah. house like why put it in the little one when i could wait for the big one to come and then put it all yeah. in there at the same time yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so and, and that's the I kind mean, of the feeling i've got with season of discovery at the moment i'm like well it seems pointless doing anything now i mean the thing is that i can't say that what i'm doing in retail is necessarily like a better use of time. Uh, so you, you want you want to hear what my stupid project has been? I demand oh, it. Yes, please. Okay, so war bands are coming up. Mm -hmm. you know, your your customizable login screen. Um, I misremembered something from BlizzCon. I had remembered it as four alts. So main plus four, right? Five yeah. characters, nice and symmetrical. Your main in the middle. Mm -hmm. No, it's four, but five, I had the, I incepted in my own head, five characters on this, uh, on this login screen and I've been maining evoker. Y you know, what would go great. What would look fantastic on that login screen, five themed evokers, one for Different each, flights. Yeah. one for each flight, each one, like with a, with a, with a thematic, like, you know, a flight appropriate name, beautiful color. Okay, great. Gr this this will look fan this will look amazing. Okay, wait, but 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 you can only have one evoker per realm. And in order to have an evoker on a realm, you need to have a level 50 on that realm. So, I start like power leveling just like hunters, rogues, demon hunters up to 50 in order to make an evoker to level that to 70 to then go jump onto another realm and like i'm on nathrazim so like so it's part of one of the like big sort of mega realms you know there's like eight or nine name servers that are attached to the actual like uh the actual um servers so these are all like so they're all on the same <laughs> server cluster uh and then i'm like i'm level i'm i'm level 61 on the green dragon which is the last one that I have to do. Oh, mate. When I, when I see on Reddit someone like my war band is ready to go and they post they, they post this screenshot of like four characters and I'm like, <laughs> where's the, where's the yeah. like, there's, there's, you're missing one, bro. And then I'm like, oh, no. Hey, Dan, you oh. should double check this. <laughs> <laughs> all right well the campaign starts now the crusade starts now it's like we look we have Wait. we've got a bit of sway in the wow community if we just dedicate every single weekly reset episode from now on into being like the community has spoken blizz they want five <laughs> tunes five on, on the war yeah. band screen this is the worst thing like we can't possibly play with four what are you even playing at blizz why what do you are, hate your player you base doing? why don't you respect yeah. our time give us the four the, it's, five it's a wide oh. screen it's it's a it's a wide screen <laughs> aspect ratio four is yeah. gonna yeah well yeah. and imagine not having <laughs> the, the amount of characters that make up a party a dungeon party you know it doesn't make any sense at all and and i think that's actually why why five like felt so just natural was yeah. it's like oh it's like it's it's your dungeon party like yeah. numbers so uh, i'm convinced it, i like having four on the warband screen is is not just an insult it's a slap in the face it's a it's a spit down my throat <laughs> Oh, no, like, I, why do Blizz I mean, hate we their joke, players? But like, why do they hate their players, Dan? The There's the question. <laughs> we joke, but we have the clout to get this changed <laughs> if we were that, like, if we were that just craven. Um, yeah. Are we that craven? I think, I think if Mike Ibarra was still there, we could get it done. Oh.
I reckon that we could, sh- we could, we could, like, Mike Ibarra, I get the feeling if you were nice to him and if you said he was cool, you could kind of make him do anything you wanted to you do. You send him a nice tweet. Yeah, you'd be like, wow, Dan, oh, I've been really enjoying your Hogwarts Legacy playthrough on Twitch. Uh, how about those five Warbang characters? What do you think about that? Would that be cool? Yeah, yeah. No, but I, I, what, what I love about this is it just goes to show, like, you know, if you ask someone, it's like, are, are you playing WoW well right now? Yes. Are you playing retail? Yeah. You know, how are you, how you are playing retail uh might be very different from how someone else is playing it yeah well i mean and again there is such a kind of at the moment especially when we've got a bit of a content drought going on we're still waiting for news on on Mm -hmm. uh, 10.26 um you know i I, luckily playing wow and writing about wow and talking about wow is is our job as well so we always have a reason and an excuse to play I guess when you're kind of in the midst of, you know, video work and and, and creating a, a new piece for your channel, does WoW kind of drift off? Is it something you can drift in and out of? Or because you are you are uh, an unbroken sub still from from your your first day, from the first month that the game was out. Is that still the case? Uh yeah, that's still the case. Um which uh I mean comes down to a little bit of like there is a there is a healthy uh, there is a healthy chunk there at the end of wad and uh, and through most of legion where that that active sub was not actually active so th- i i did kind of get i did kind of get got by subscription mentality um but uh yeah no i i i leave it active i usually come in and out like during content droughts or when i i get really fixated on getting uh getting a video finished um uh, my playtime will will go down a lot or you know i'll i'll bounce off onto like oxygen not included or city skylines or something else like a uh construction game for a while like i'll have a big you know minecraft or valheim uh burst um but you know I mean, at the end of the day, like, just because you've got a subscription doesn't mean WoW needs to be, like, the one game you play, Mm -hmm. right? Like, it it would, in fact, be insane and unhealthy to have that, like, opinion in your brain. Um, I think some people might have that opinion. (laughs) I hate to break it to you, Dan. (laughs) Oh, I know. Um, You know, so, so yeah, like, I'll uh, uh, I'll bounce in and out. And, like, right now, like, I think uh, just just this week, our last raider got their Feraloth. Um, uh, I have all of my evokers, at least LFR geared or better. Um, I was using our Feraloth grind to, like, sneak evokers in for uh, ahead of the curve. So five, four of the five have ahead of the curve just by, like forcing the raid to carry me it's incredible uh, it's like, got, are you gonna uh, do you have a, like a uniform in mind for your five because it will be five we'll make, we'll yeah, make sure i have happens. to know for your, for look, your five uh, look, evokers uh names no. everything i need all the details okay so that so so the names are uh uh so the names are all thematic so christagosa was the first one that i made which was of course a variant on my druid's name uh and then christraza christarian christadormu and christra <laughs> For the... it, makes, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's important beautiful. that you stick beautiful. to dragon naming conventions. Oh, it's, I, it's I don't tend yeah. to, you, but you do. A, you're, you're a big the sticker law. on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah the no, law when you have an evoker. I yeah. just name them yeah. all after dragons from Earthsea, but you actually like okay. stick Ooh, to the names. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, no. Yeah. Ooh, Earthsea is a good place to pull. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. we've got uh, four eight four four six five four six six four five seven four five one. Put my walks to shame there. Wow. I, I, know you, uh, I have gotten very good at getting new characters <laughs> LFR ready. I feel like at the very least they should share a tabard. That's what I kind of think with my war bands. I'm yeah. thinking, you know, they're going to have a tabard. So it's almost like they're in a guild together. You know, I'll find a tabard, a lesser used tabard that kind of resonates with me or something. Mm-hmm. And they'll all be wearing that. That'll be like their uniform. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a good idea. Right now I've got them all very like, they're all kind of bespoke it doesn't matter right? you can't like see they, him on can't see him on a, them... a evoker anyway you can't, you can't see any transmog on them at all you can have whatever oh you no want. like their their transmogs actually are all just like chaos everyone so so my main has a has a like customized transmog that i've worked on i think i'm in like old war gear or uh older gear at the moment um uh because i got the i got the titan hammer from uh from uh the from that bronze dragon instance so i so i built a transmog around that hammer um and then the others no transmog they're literally just dressed like clowns 
in in a, a chaos of whatever but then they're like their dragon forms are very like i i, I love customizing the uh the the dragon forms i i think i think a lot of people overstate the whole transmog issue on uh on drakthir like people who don't play drakthir overstate it that sounds um, very unlike the wow community are you sure <laughs> No, I, I, I agree. I agree, actually, because I uh, as I was, um, you know, playing through Dragonflight and uh, I, sw I, I swapped, I left my hunter behind for a little while and I became an evoker and I found it like essential as, you know, when I started, you know, like the blue, like, you know, flights quest line. I had to be, I had to change and become a blue dragon, right? And as I, you know, as I did stuff for Alex Straza, I got a cool red, you know, like hat. I was like, okay, now I'm a red dragon. So your dragon's more like a chameleon. Yeah, yeah. And I had this, I had this like really fixed identity, you know, before the game dropped and I spent ages in the character creation and that all fell out the window when I, uh, when I started playing and I was like, oh wait, hold on. I, I, I have to be like the flight that I am, uh working interacting right with yeah, yeah. yeah like people who uh, kind of adopt the uh, the accent of whoever they're talking to yeah but then of course the, so the the like the pinnacle of that is when you go through all of the colors and on your right down like all of the you know the actual armor drag their armor customizations are amazing you can make them look super cool without wearing any real armor yeah, she is. and and then the oh hello yeah this is this is felix he's the younger one hello felix oh Oh. A classic cat name. Yeah, and Dan, a stickler a for uh, dragon naming conventions yeah, and cat naming and conventions, yeah, and I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> but of course, uh, the once you've exhausted every color of uh, Drakthir, you have to go for like the white bald like, <laughs> do you know what i mean like naked like worm oh no right? we need six we need six <laughs> so that's that's the state of my my uh, evoker right now <laughs> blizzard give us six warband characters on the front screen or you hate your players why do you hate your players blizz why <laughs> oh man do we have time to like pivot to like one other uh, one other subject what's what's our time looking like oh wh whatever you like um uh yeah no we got we got time yeah, please pick yeah. it. And if, if it comes down to it, I can take it. I mean, off this this is a laser focused uh, yeah. podcast. Yes. Um, so, you know, this is very unusual for us to do a pivot, but we can we can yeah, appease we'll, our guests. We'll allow we it. That, yeah. Just this one time. So so a thing that's really been on on my mind a lot lately is the is the idea of a world revamp and and specifically this sort of tension that needs to be resolved between the community and itself and and the community's relationship with the game and i think there's been a really interesting i think there's been a really interesting shift in the way that players feel about the game that i don't think they necessarily appreciate that has shifted within them um so so sentiment right now on on reddit on the forums on the influencer sphere is that a old world revamp or making better use of Eastern Kingdom's Callum Door, making use of places we've already been uh, in order to have like important events happen in places that were previously important and not just as a like little instanced pocket that you go into during a questing scenario that, that there's sort of a thirst for that. Uh, that that the opinion is that it's like, why hasn't Blizzard already been doing this all along? Mm -hmm. uh is is kind of the the way that it sort of gets talked about especially on reddit reddit really likes to sort of talk about it as the as if it's this no-brainer that's just been sitting on the table for 20 years and like why haven't they bothered to bother to do that and that's a new sentiment that that i i think it's really interesting that we've we're seeing that come up but it's i think it's because we've hit sort of thresholds because if you go back to like if if Miss of Pandaria had come out and like you know we had that long content drought at the end of Miss of Pandaria and then they were like all right coming up Warlords of Draenor, no new continents, just old stuff, zero new zones, just like it's like we're just gonna send you back to places you've already been. That would be the line. It's like well they're just sending us places we've already been. Sure. You know you mm -hmm. had this cultural expectation of like what's an expansion? It's a new continent four to six new zones, X new dungeons, whatever. And, but it's like, but it's new. It's they've, you know, that th it can't just be 
something new in a place we've already been. It must be built from the ground up because otherwise you're disrespecting us uh, with with what you're giving to us. And and I I think that's finally I, Cataclysm did some damage <laughs> to the psyche I, I of the think, average WoW player. Yeah. But I think it's uh, I I think that's finally like that's finally shifting, and I think I can pinpoint like how and why Dragonflight primed people for that. How? Oh yes, tell us. So Dragonflight is in many ways a redo of Dragon Blight, right? You know, sure. You, you had the uh, you you had the. I don't even remember what it, what it's called at the moment. The uh, the the temple of the aspects in the middle of Dragon Blight, um, the big the big old tower, uh, you know, where up at the top you've got like Alex Straz and a couple others just kind of like standing around in human form. And even back at the time, it was sort of commented that it's like it's like why is this tower not like dragon sized? Like they're dragons, but they all but like they interact with the architecture in like human scale. Um, and so Valdraken is kind of the like 2.0, like, oh, here, here is the dragon scale size of like, here is the dragon scaled version of, uh, version of that. And, and it's just kind of this, like, it's like, oh, but here's, here's the one that was actually important. Um, that, that one up in Northrend, like, yeah, it's important, but it's the, <laughs> it's the imitator. This is the original. It was just off screen the whole time. And and Dragonflight has had a lot of really good content that sort of has that narrative role of like, oh, this was the like original version of the thing. It was hiding over here just off screen the whole time. And you do that enough times and people start realizing this like, wait a second, like, wow, has actually really been doing that a lot <laughs> for, for like 18 years where it's like, oh, here's the real ver like basically once, you know, really like. <laughs> In a lot of ways, after uh, uh, after Wrath, especially after Legion, um, you know, and, and basically after BFA, like all the all the legacy locations, mm -hmm. or virtually all of the legacy locations from from the previous games, had were now in game. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. like okay, we've we've sort of exhausted this pool of lore locations that that have been just off screen and now we need to just invent new ver like new lore locations and we need to come up with reasons for both why they're important and why we haven't already been there and then but and, i i guess the problem is that they then followed the same formula uh of say a culturus or a, a nagatar or uh an argus where they just treated it as if it was a legacy location you know the yeah. idea that it's sort of we, we've created a, a new legacy location and it's always been there and we we never really talked about it before like we did nagatar and like we did argus but believe me the characters know they all know right. it's all in there it's all internalized sort of things so yeah and I, I think that is something that has kind of frustrated players I, I i feel like to an extreme kind of warped degree that's exactly what happened in shadowlands as well the idea of oh, all the lich king stuff all the yeah. architecture all the armor the, all the spikes the initial and like and with shadowlands like the initial stuff where like you go in and it's just like it's like oh okay all of the all of the northrend architecture is sort of being retconned as being like influenced by that it's like and and initially it was like, oh, that's kind of like a cool little thematic resonance, right? You know, it's like you're just you're just kind of adding a little bit of new backstory flavor into it, and then it wound up becoming like so oppressively central as Zoval <laughs> got built into being like actually the puppet master be behind everything important that's happened, and it's just like it got exhausting. Um, it got exhausting and it got stupid, uh, and uh, and yeah, so I I, I think. I think it's the fact that Dragonflight has been able to deliver very good content that has invited people to engage with it, but then that engagement has has exposed this sort of like quirk of its existence uh, that has then called attention to a, a long running narrative trick uh, that that the game has used, and that has shifted player sentiment into this like, no, we really actually truly 
need to go see what's happening in these other places in the world that used to be important and have now been frozen in amber uh, for, for, you know, N years. And there is the promise of kind of doing that in, in the World Soul Saga, I guess, you know, with uh, yeah. Northrend being a, a, a zone that we'll be going back to in The Last Titan and Kel'Thalas in, in Midnight. Mm-hmm. Is that enough? Do you think? Is that what the player base want? Is kind of just you know, happening in a current expansion or something more evergreen, do you think? I I, I think the safer way of doing it, like, I... I I, I don't know that there is necessarily a right answer because mm-hmm. obviously a total overhaul, you run into the the cataclysm problem, which is, you know, a two pronged problem. One is the sheer volume of work to be done mm-hmm. on that world overhaul wound up killing an entire tier. Um, and, and two, what if the decisions you make are kind of cringe, but you've committed <laughs> to doing the entire world in it? Like I, I have done, I have done a lot of cata content um uh in in leveling those those four you know uh other characters and like some of it holds up and a lot of it is just like wow this is kind of like very oppressively of its time yeah um <laughs> in a way that i don't even think like okay so so in the uh in in the wow classic and what we left behind video uh i i talked about you know sort of one of the problems of cataclysm being the decisions that were made and the way that a lot of the zones were uh uh sequels to their previous versions yeah. and the example that i used visually in the video was was dust wallow marsh uh because that was like the sort of the the most current on the top of my mind really like i should have used <laughs> i should have used uh um hills brad foothills because like by god as i was leveling through there i was like this is incoherent if you don't know like if, if you're a person who who does a read quest text this zone makes no sense if you didn't play classic it's all just like it's all just references and in jokes and oh here's this character that you met before but now they're like doing this other thing oh look like all of these people that you like went and killed in this original quest well now their undead versions are like mini bosses in this new quest line and i'm just it's like this makes this is incoherent like if you if you are not deep inside wow baseball and and we're not like very familiar with with the old structure of the zone the fact that you 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 will you will pick up on the fact that the these quests are constantly like giving you a wink and a nudge like hey remember this remember this like it's just it's member berries the zone um (laughs) and and like it's like okay so you can do you can do a, a a zone overhaul and and wreck it, mm-hmm. yeah. and I think that's the uh, that's that's the really delicate thing. Um, and then also the question of like how do you like do you just replace the old stuff? How do you layer it on with phasing and whatnot without making it just like weird and cumbersome or do you like do you even care about that at all do you like layer on a new version and be like ah here's here's a dragon that'll take you back to the other version uh if you want to see it and like and that's just kind of available as like an accessibility option effectively uh because like with with sort of the full awareness that 10 people a year are going to actually go click on that dragon and and play through you know 20 year old quests yeah it's funny because i i started playing in cataclysm and so like my understanding of wow is that it was essentially incoherent it was like (laughs) right okay so i've got these kind of like pop culture references and some jokes clearly some stuff happened in the past um I like the way my elf looks. This is fun. I can turn into a cat. And so I kind of, that was my understanding of it until it kind of progressed. And then you get, you know, you, you, you get stories and you get like actual like quest writing and then kind of later expansions and stuff that stands on its own. Um, So it's funny going into it that way, but it it does make me think about some of the things that they've started doing in in retail now with um, 
with some of the kind of like dipping back into the old world without actually changing it. So you've got dynamic flight, which, you know, now you can zip around those zones and experience them in a new way. Um, and another was uh, with some of the new holidays. I did the like the Love is in the Air quest. Well, Love is in the Air was great. What did a, you do what that, a, right? What a fabulous, uh, you know, I, every now and then like okay so like I, I do have some like marketing and like product experience and 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 film school will in like if you take a technical school they will in fact teach you about like, like okay a property like an exploitable property like if you have an IP it is a thing that you can exploit like you have the rights to like make money off of it and think about it like a product and whatnot and so like I still have that in the back of my brain and I look at love is in the air and I'm just like what a what a fabulous value <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> you know what like in in terms of like how many people it would have taken to make that how many bespoke new like how many artist assets needed to be made how many quest designers needed to be employed for how long in order to populate all of that stuff and it's like and in terms of how much people liked it how much it got talked about how many players engaged with it what a what a just what a just amazing value right like uh it's like so so that business aspect like creeps in every now and then but like no like love is in the air was like was great it was you know you you had a reason to go to these uh go to these old zones your time spent there was like just long enough to kind of like remember like oh the great ambiance over here in grizzly hills um without kind of and I think very importantly, they had a a movement system sort of arranged to make the point A to point B not feel uh, egregious, mm -hmm. um, which can't necessarily be said for, it's like, all right, now head on out to uh, Silver Pine. Um, no, I uh, I'm I'm super rambling, but yes, Love Is in the Air was 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 great and uh, and and really made made good use of uh, existing zones. Is that all it takes? Do you think is is and, and and for it to be is it dangerous to have it too relevant in in terms of a, a world revamp? Because I mean that you could argue that's the problem with Cataclysm, right? Is it's like we yeah. put in all this work, but again instantly from from day two of cataclysm it's old content again and it's it, the, the second mists uh releases half of the storylines in those catazones are out of date and and they are themselves like so specific to a certain storyline um and a very intense storyline like half of the zones have um uh, uh a Deathwing like flying around and yeah, being a main related, and stuff like, like that. Practicing, yeah, yeah. So and and you know that's been there now longer than the original Vanilla Zones ever were, um, by miles, by far. Um, and it, it it's one of the things that makes the old world feel so in need of a revamp. I think mm -hmm. is because not only has that content been there for a long time, but it's such specific content and it's so specific to a, a certain expansion. Is there the yeah. danger with something like Midnight or, or The Last Titan where you are revamping it specifically for the purposes of an expansion? Is there a danger that you're going to have the same problem? Is I, it better to I think there's of... a danger, but also an opportunity because like, because if you're, if you're kind of going in and you're doing a little bit of a, you know, you're, you're not, you're just doing a little bit of a repave. You're like, it's like, okay, mm -hmm. you get into this questing phase and then, you know, we're, we're not doing like big, um, terrain overhauls. We're just like, you get into the area and the NPCs repopulate. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a whole bunch of new triggers around for like dialogue and whatnot. It is an opportunity. Like it's, there's a risk of making it too hyper specific, but there's also an opportunity to just kind of like genericize it a little bit. You know, that it's like, okay, like what if you go into the area and there's a new story happening, but that story doesn't like could just be a new local story yeah. um, that, that's happening in that region. And like and it has thematic or like like it has ties into the bigger uh, into the bigger expansion, like it has ties into Midnight, but it's not like, you know. Oh, what is Zalatath doing right over here? Uh, here's a Riddicron, like X Y Z thing. It can be a local story about like mm -hmm. Furbolgs or whatever, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. And 
And I think, I think like that's really kind of like a lot of what's missing from the, from the Cata revamp is like, it's all so hyper-focused on the day Deathwing arrived and, uh, and there's not enough just like, what are people doing over there? Yeah. Oh, oh, Um, I I think it's the Deathwing thing. And I, and I think it's also the, uh, the main theme of all of those stories is everything is broken. Everything just broke just now it literally just yeah. broke we are dealing with how it is we're not used to it being broken yet like we are dealing with the fact that it's just broken and this is a new thing for us and of course like 20 years later 15 years later you're within your rights to be kind of asking why are you not used to how broken it is yet why haven't you fixed that wall it's just a wall if it's causing so much problem just fix the wall and and so i think it's it's that thing it's not just the fact that it was expansion specific it was the situation that expansion was so immediate and it doesn't yeah. really kind of survive a long kind of expanse of time and, and and more than any other expansion the story in in cataclysm kind of ages Cause, really because you replay you replay mop you replay uh uh you replay dragonfly heck even like wads leveling experience where y- you know you you get this um you know, Dra- Dragonflight's a great example. Uh, you've got your main storyline with the flights. You've you've got your shield quests, which are very much like Razagath storyline building up to uh, up to the raid. Um, but then, if you wander twenty feet off to the side of that line, oh, here's just a quest about like here here's a story about a bunch of funny walrus kids who have found a knoll kid that they want to be friends with but the knoll kid wants to wants to eat them because he thinks they're food and it's like ah you know here here's 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 a little walrus kid who lost his mother so he wants to be a hero so you go convince a yeti to to humor his uh humor his desire to be a monster slayer and like you know, you you can do that a billion times. Like you can you can come back to that twenty years from now, and and it's not going to be like, yeah, okay, we get it. Like, yeah, Razagath. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. like you you've got those breaks. You have those that breathing room around it that that I think the Cataclysm stuff was lacking. So that would be the main sort of like in any in populating the new stuff and updating it. The the creative impetus needs to be something like can't get bogged down in like in in this like intense need to be relevant it's like you can it's like you gotta you gotta have irrelevant side stories that are just self-contained and good and like doing something different so that there's there's a break because otherwise if if because the thing is, is that MMOs are built by so many different people, so many different quest writers, so many different quest, you know, uh, um, scripters uh, and whatnot, who are all working on their own little pocket of stuff. And if they're all working at the exact same level of intensity, you unintentionally end up with this like overload of relevance. Yeah, I get that. Would you? I mean, there is an argument though. Um, and uh, a feeling in the community that maybe Dragonflight uh, the, throughout the co- the lifetime of it as an expansion has lacked a bit of relevance and could have done with a little bit more. And whereas I agree with you, I, I think Dragonflight as as content will age really, really well. And I think it's been designed that way. Like I, I think Dragonflight will probably be the new player leveling experience all the way through the World Soul Saga. I don't think they'll move yeah. on to uh, the War Within when Midnight comes out. I think it'll it's it's yeah, gonna no, be I there. think they'll I think they'll sit on Dragonflight for yeah, a while. Yeah. I think so. And I think it's designed to be like that for, for many of the reasons you just gave. But then you can go on YouTube right now and find any amount of people complaining that there's a lack of danger, there's a lack of stakes, the the, the story isn't immediate enough, isn't kind of dangerous enough. Is that a, a symptom of the good things that we've listed there, do you think? I, I, in some ways, um, I, I don't think it necessarily is true. Like if you do the main quest line, like if, if you stay on kind of the shield quest rails, then, then Dragonflight has, uh, it's, it's got a lot of inertia. 
uh, it it does have a you know Razagath is just present enough through that whole story that like you you don't forget that like she's around and she's up to something and you've got like a major sort of interaction in every uh, in every zone and also every zone has um, on their on their shield path has at least one side story that is about the consequences of Razagath, but not about Razagath. So mm -hmm. like the, the best example of that is Brackenhide where, you know, you, you have this, like this obsession with, with, uh, with rot power that is like at, at risk of just kind of like consuming the zone and is having all of this spillover, uh, uh, spillover effect. And that's not, that's not like Razagath's doing it's just kind of a consequence of the primalists going to the knolls and being like, yo, hey guys, you want some rot power? <laughs> and and then the mm -hmm. like the primalists do that, like in, in the storyline, like they they basically give these totems to the knolls and then like and then peace out. And like they're not present otherwise. Yeah. It's just it's a consequence of a thing that they've done. Um and and I, I think there's a fantastic inertia to the main storyline. I think there are like there are definitely hitches. You know, there's that tower in eastern uh, uh, eastern Azure Span that's oh, like yeah, the ice it's tower? the climax. Yeah, yeah. it's the mm -hmm. climax of Azure Span, and then we never go back. No, <laughs> we, don't, we never still don't know inside. what's in it. We, just, yeah. we never get inside. Like, yeah, still, so still don't know what was in there. And I don't think they even reveal that in like the book or anything like that. Um, uh, in in the Scaleborn novel, I, I kind of expected there to be huge sways of that novel set in that tower and how important it was and and for all to be revealed. But no, just one of those things. Yeah. So so like I don't want to. I'm not. I'm not saying that there aren't like dropped threads or or like kind of hitches in the storyline. I think Vera not Vera Loth's, um, her heel turn, um, uh, or I, I guess face turn, um, was narratively forecast very well, mm. but then it's like they forecast it and then it just happens like mm -hmm. immediately after. And it's like, you could have given that like one more chapter worth of yeah. like, hang time like you know uh so like th there's there's definitely hitches and like inconsistencies and uh and whatnot i don't think it necessarily like i i think the like lack of relevance or what people are describing as a lack of relevance is that thing that i was talking about earlier where they're seeing sort of the seams of of oh here's this place that's important but we need to kind of come up with a reason for why it's why it wasn't important enough for us to have just come back here or like why didn't we come back here earlier when xyz other like world threatening thing yeah. was happening um and i i think it's the themes on that that are really like standing out and so that plus the the jank that undeniably does exist in there is is creating some dissonance that people are describing as that like are, are describing as that that lack of relevance can i can i ask you then in uh because just for my own like personal interest um where would you rank dragonflight's narrative in comparison to other expansions in that case second behind mop really mm. that high up mm, actually you know what no i'm gonna i'm gonna put it i'm gonna say mop <laughs> BFAs or well okay like actually what are what are sort of our constraints on this yeah what are what are our bounds cuz i'm i'm thinking leveling experience okay um, i know i i need I, as like a mm. a beginning middle and end of like an expansion story i think i want to take oh, the man. i want to take I mean, the I whole can, story the thing is, as a into consideration yeah god which ones well, okay so like that that landing, introduces right? the question of like yeah which which uh which expansions didn't turn into like kind of a cluster over the course yeah. of their development because bfa uh, just falls into into bits bfa basically. bfa falls into just just kind of shatters got i love that expansion but like it's it's a mess um by by the end um mop manages to kind of hold itself uh through the entire thing um 
Wrath. It's Where time. would I put Dragonflight? <laughs> God, I don't know. I, I would still, I would still definitely put it in like the top five. Um, I think I would need to really kind of, I think I would really need to like sit down and hash out like, okay, which expansions just sort of like fell off their own rails in patch two, patch three, <laughs> yeah. uh, which, which ones managed to sort of like, which ones maybe like took a long detour in the middle, but then like came back, you know, but, but stuck the landing. Um, cause the thing is, is that like. All of them have some weirdness. All of them have some some jank. I think Legion is, yeah, Legion and Mop are probably the two most cohesive uh, in terms of like none of their mid patches um, were like kind of disastrous detours that derailed uh, what what sort of followed. Um, Cataclysm, ironically, <laughs> does manage to be yeah. fairly <laughs> consistent um, from beginning to end, uh, uh, largely because the path from beginning to end is uh, is kind of tragically short. Um, <laughs> ditto Wad, incidentally, same reasons. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's, it's. I don't it's, know. That's a yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard to factor in even thinking about you know because we're looking back on them now as these kind of yeah. contained stories, but obviously we experience them as like you know little bits of content, you know, huge drop of content, and then drips and drabs and patches and patches with big weights and short weights, and so yeah. I think I think it, it's it's hard to kind of look back on it but i i think there's something to be said about how like linear dragonflight story is like when i think back on it it's obviously you know fresh in my mind but it's like okay we've got we've got our, our dragon flights they're all color coded this is you know like really just kind of yeah, thinking yeah, there's yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, no, I, there's I, like I'm with it. they're color coded they have a physical space around kind of the map and uh they're all associated you know they have their like associated characters and then we've got this this little group of baddies and they are also color coded and <laughs> and there's like a kind of a quite a straightforward story so maybe this is just because i've i've played it most recently but when i look back on it i'm like okay this is this is going to be easy for me to kind of in the future talk about and be like, okay, this is what happened in Dragonflight. Yeah. Uh, this story it started here, ended here. Um, well, we but did these we've we've, way. we've got two groups of baddies, except one of those groups of baddies is not necess is your like sympathetic baddies, <laughs> right? Because they're actually like rebels. You know, you've got the whole Sarkarath yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. plot line yeah. with with the rebels, which is yeah. Yeah, like yeah. it's not. It's, I'm even it's okay not with the primalists bad. these There's days. Some... Like, I, I like those little quests in uh, in the Emerald Dream where you go around like recruiting primalists, and uh, mm -hmm. you know some of them are like, "Oh no, death to you!" But then some of them are literally like, "Yeah, I don't really know. I kind of wasted my time yeah, for the last couple of years. I don't, I don't know, know what I'm doing. Right? This is rubbish. I've, Why am I here? I'm this looking sucks. around, and I feel like I feel like we've lost the plot. I don't remember what we were doing. <laughs> like, why? I feel how like... did I end up out here? I yeah, I, I signed like... up for Dragon Emancipation, and now I'm trying to burn. <laughs> down I feel like the, might the, be the earth baddies. itself yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and i like that i that's not something you usually get with uh with a lot of wow kind of wrap up sort of uh zones and stuff which i guess i dream is i think okay actually on on that note the 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 single player climax for emerald dream where um oh god it's 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 so good it's okay. so good. Like you're fighting outside the temple, mm -hmm. or like you, you know, you're you, you you do all of the fighting at the uh, at the the tier, and then it's like the the assault on the temple starts, and you do the first couple of quests where you're like, it's like, oh, run over here and go kill these two big elementals, and then go spy on this stuff over here, and then you you fly around with Alex Straza and knock down the three pylons, and it's like it's all very normal, but then it's like it plays that that cutscene. Where um, oh, Farak Avengers like assemble? knocks Alex Straza, yeah. yeah, the Avengers assemble moment where like Farak uh, knocks her out, and it's like everybody comes out. And I'm like, oh, that's really good. But then like this this brilliant quest immediately after that, where you mm -hmm. have this whole diorama of like everybody's out fighting, and you go around, 
And it's like, and you've got two options for how to complete the quest. One, you can go kill stuff. Or two, you can just walk around and click on this little horn extra action button that you've got mm -hmm. and, and get some dialogue from it. And, and I've done that six times now. And every time I choke up, because you're going joy. around yeah, and it's like, you're, it's just, it's so good with, uh, with like all these little dialogue things that you get. And like, I, I thought it like the magic might. So the first time I'm just like blown away, I'm choked up. I'm like, I, I got to talk about this like somewhere. And, um, and, but th then I'm like, it's like, you know what? The magic will probably wear off. Like you, you just kind of got caught off guard by it, but no, I've done it a bunch of times. It's legitimately really good. And like the, the dialogue that you're getting from these NPCs as you're going next to them. And the fact that like some of them are really sort of triumphant, but a bunch of them are kind of fatalist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there's a bunch of little, little, um, uh, uh, moments around the, around the edges, particularly with like, with, um, uh what's uh Voss um yeah. Lillian you know where like y there's a bunch of moments around the edges where they're just like yeah we're probably going to die here but like it was worth it and it me, and I think sorry. yeah like just having this scene where it's like you know the, like there's a great tension within the scene where like some people are like yeah, we, we're coming in and we're winning Avengers Assemble, and they're like, but but it's not sort of this like uniform like ah we've won already. It's just it's a really well told sort of story that you can experience at your leisure, and you don't need to kill a thing in order to complete it. And in fact, like you you've got twice as many little dialogue moments that you can experience by using the horn as you need to actually fill the bar. Oh, yeah, and the first time I did it, I was just like. I was done the quest like 10 minutes before I actually turned it in because I was just like, is there more? Is there, is there one that I missed? Like I'm going around like every, every NPC with a name, I'm just going and standing next to them. Yeah. And like, I was so like, scared that I was going to accidentally complete stuff. the quest before I'd had a chance to kind mm. of hear everything. It makes me so happy to hear you say that as well, because I, the, the, I don't know how kind of like in with sort of internet wow discourse you are, but people were really down on that cutscene. on, on, I mean, the fact that we we call it the Avengers Assemble, right? Um, and and people people hated that. People used it as example of of like why WoW is trash now and and whatever. Fair enough. But like the thing that annoyed me, if anything, did was the fact that people never talked about that scene afterwards as well. And you know they they are part of the same yeah. chapter of the story. And and yeah, it, it, it's it, it's such a good kind of. Uh, climax to that to that uh lead into the to the raid i guess yeah and then likewise yeah. I, I yeah i had a similar experience with you know once you're in Bellameth and uh you're having the big party and then you're going around and talking to everyone at the party like that like you know just another like just just loved these kind of yeah these quests where i just wanted to go around and actually talk to everybody yeah like new characters but also legacy characters um i think dragonflight is really good at wrapping stuff up and, yeah, and sort yeah. of like putting a, a more satisfying than usual bow on on kind of storylines and what have you like uh even just kind of the uh the draconids in in uh you know the, there's like that rebel faction of dragonkin who kind of want to blow up alex Straza and stuff mm -hmm. and usually you'd kind of stomp on them and that would be the end of it but she invites him for tea and listens to their problems. And then she's like, oh yeah, it, I guess it is bad that we treat you like slaves. I guess. Yeah. Oh wow, oh, slavery why? bad actually. Well, you, you act yeah. like that's easy, but they don't I mean, mean in, in Harry Potter, do you know what I mean? Like it's, it, yeah. it's a... No, it was, it was a very, like, yeah, the, the, that was a, that was a, a, a difficult, I think they did an okay job at like threading through it without it getting like too cringe. But like, it is sort of like weird when you do have to sort of unravel that, like, oh, you know, 25 years ago, like however many years ago, <laughs> like literally decades ago, some dude who was not thinking ahead that is like, oh yeah, this is going to be a thing that I'll, that someone will need to grapple with yeah. in the future. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's like, yeah, they've got a bunch of magical helpers who are also like, there's just they're smaller dragons, and it's like, well, what do they do? I don't know. They were magically created as servants, whatever. And, but they and like move it, on. though, Dan. You don't but understand. They like, they like it, it so much. Just like the owl people in Shadowlands, they'd be just upset like the if you yeah. made them stop. <laughs> and and it's like it's like okay, like yeah, it's it's difficult to sort of like unravel that. I think the the quest where you're walking around with Alexstrasza and she's like, huh, 
slavery bad? <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, that's a little weird. But <laughs> you hopes and dr- Oh, you want things? <laughs> you experience pain? You want the, um, but you want you want to do fighting for the dragon so, no you want to paint? Oh. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yeah, th- that one was a little that one was a little weird. I think like But I'm once, glad they went once, there though. It was I'm weird. They, it, it kind of you yeah. can't not make it weird in a way. And and I'm glad that yeah. if you have to have that moment of orcs and cringe and and just going, Wow, Alex Strauss is literally the most stupid person ever born. If that does then solve the thing, then I think it's probably worthwhile. I don't know. It's probably worthwhile. And I think the 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 follow up quest after that where like Alex Straza goes back up to the top of the tower but then you get to do like but then there's a bunch more like dialogue and you go around and you talk with some more some more draconids and I, I I think the the thing sort of after that really smoothed it over and also for players who were doing players who played uh, uh, Evoker um, through the expansion they got a whole bunch of like gr- amazing little side stories yeah. with the uh, um uh, with with like the shattered flame follow up and people sort of like de radicalizing, um, but then also like that tying in with kind of the core uh, uh, evoker whole story of like oh well we were built as super soldiers and then put into stasis for a billion years and like where do we like fit into the world if like you know it's like okay I'm I'm a decommissioned Terminator what do I do now? And there's this great little scene, you know, there's, it's, it's actually like, it was like a four week quest, five week quest or something like that of basically setting up for this, like mix and mingle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. But I love a wow mix and mingle though. That's yeah. Uh, and it yeah, was, same. it was great. Same. Yeah. I, I, I like all that. I think it's, I think it's been great. I mean, it, it, like, okay. So it, it has actually kind of, I, there were times it, during the uh, 10.2 stuff and uh, where I, I felt like I was going a little bit mad and I felt like I was the only person that had any good things to say about it at all. So it, it, like, I find it very vindicating to hear you say some nice things about it too. And I'm going to, I'm going to stick with it. That's, that's good. Um, I'd love to pick your brains about uh, just some of the, uh, the, the more immediate wow discourse um, sure. while you're here. I, I think, I think for me, it's just like such a joy to hear you talk about wow, because you're someone who I don't listen talk to about wow I listen to you talk about other things and and hearing you kind of be part of this world which I know you live in but which you kind of you don't show so much is is like super interesting um so like one of the big talking points um at the moment is uh well hero talents and and how they're gonna kind of uh play out in uh the war within and this wider conversation about whether wow it as uh, mechanics and as literal gameplay is kind of bloated and yeah. inaccessible mm-hmm. what's your take on that <laughs> um, <laughs> so, nice so i think yeah so i think your read on on hero talents and the comparison to uh, uh the comparison to covenants is is very apt and straightforward and like i got caught by the covenants thing you know like i was like the kyrian like their look the characters like i was like all in on that but i was playing uh but i was playing uh druid and when i was resto it was like fine you know like the difference between the, the difference between uh a kyrian resto druid and a um night fey resto druid was like not really worth addressing and then the other two at least in the first patch were just absolute trash so like who cares um but then we had too many healers and I had and I wound up going back to balance and it was like Kyrian balance druid was like it had a you you weren't there were worse choices <laughs> there were two worse choices but but it was like but the but the gap between that and convoke the spirits like having like convoke was just so powerful that that when we like stonewalled on sludge fist it was like okay well i guess i i gotta switch like if if we're gonna kill if we're gonna get ahead of the curve i need to i need to switch because yeah just just mechanically we need the we need the damage and the and that was a a lot god a lot of the problems a ton of the problems with um the power disparity in the covenants was exacerbated by the gear is gear 
wow is hard tuning of Shadowlands raids. Yeah. That that meant that like you couldn't really just kind of like if if some if your priests decided that it's like, oh, I really liked this power back in Legion, I'm going to get the legendary power where my angel lets me resurrect after I inevitably die during the fight. It's like, no, that's a bad power. That's a waste of your slot. Like, that's a bad pick. You couldn't just, like, smooth that over. You know, it's like yeah. that That person was, like, holding you back. <laughs> um, and And, like, the tuning on Sire made that viciously clear um so 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 these kinds of like discrepancies between like the this marrying of player power and uh and class fantasy um the consequences of it can be exacerbated by other things in the game and like how difficult the content is when the break points and the difficulty mm-hmm. are so like you know, if if the top end, if if it's like the the last four bosses of the first raid on mythic difficulty are unbeatable unless everybody has min max to this degree, like I don't want to say that's not a problem, but that's not a problem. Like that, like okay, whatever. Like of course, of course, that's the way that it is, and the players who are going to be engaging with that content just kind of like deal with it, and they have like their priorities are always going to be instrumental play because they're doing mythic raid um but if if it ends up being in a if it ends up being a situation like shadowlands where it's like you get your ahead of the curve kill of sire denathrius and then you struggle to re-clear the instance on subsequent weeks because the tuning is just so demanding that you you can't carry alts, you can't carry players who are like a little bit kind of soft on the uh, on the skill curve. Um, that's that's real bad, and that's demoralizing, and it makes all of those choices just feel so much worse. Hmm. Because you know, so like in in honestly, like in in uh, Amir Drasil, if somebody has has a 80% kind of value talent build, like they've got a, you know, say they've got like six or seven picks in there where you look at it and you're just like, not really what I would take. <laughs> that's not that's not doing what you think it's doing, or like, you know, it's like, well, okay, you've you've got an ability that applies to a crowd control button that y- you don't push. <laughs> Whatever oh, you're can't probably even imagine that. What, no, I, 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 mean... I can't imagine that as part of my life. What are you talking about? <laughs> I literally discovered what Mindsu did like a month ago. So it's always you know, been so in like, my bars. <laughs> but you know, if if you've got a bunch of players, like you've got a bunch of just regular players who who are not necessarily like they're not necessarily making just destructive character choices they are trying to make their character be good at things but like but they've taken cozy choices sure you know Mm -hmm. that that um that are maybe like on paper 75 percent as effective as the the like correct pick but like it's easier for them to actually do so if they did the correct pick like they wouldn't be able to execute the rotation properly and they would actually do less damage than the cozy pick Right. If if you take the cozy pick, you can you can get ahead of the curve. Oh like, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, you it, know. It's right. Shadowlands was the the expansion of no reclears. Like if you go back and look at my characters from Shadowlands and their uh, sort of uh, Warcraft logs, I think there's one, maybe two kills on each of the final bosses. Uh, one yeah. on Sylvanas. <laughs> two, two on Denathrius and, and maybe and two she on was, as well. She was the easier yeah, of the yeah, three. Yeah, but uh, we were just done. We were just like, we had yeah. no desire to go back in there and, and, and do that fight ever again. And I enjoyed the fight. I thought it was good. But as soon as it was done, it was over. And I was like, well, that's my head the curve. I'm I'm finished with this tier. I'm, and... <laughs> and patch yeah. and probably expansion and and it was yeah it was it was very tough um but then it is noticeably easier uh ahead of the curve raiding in in dragon fight particularly the last two tiers 
the last two tiers. The the first one, Razagath was was very much a Shadowlands boss, mm -hmm. and I think she actually very quickly became like the most lethal boss oh, in so, yeah. in WoW history. Um, definitely the most lethal of the expansion by by a very very long uh, by a very wide uh, wide margin. Um, I was I was really worried with with how intense the tuning was on uh on Razagath that that would carry through but then they're like ah upgrade <laughs> systems here's all of these things like you know because a lot of a lot of Shadowlands stuff like the tuning difficulty comes to like you can trace it back to this sort of philosophical uh banishment of titan forging and yeah. and and kind of gradual catch-up mechanisms i think they've really kind of like saw like i think the upgrade system is a solution that will stick around for years, like prob mm. probably at least two more expansions before they feel like they need to uh, dramatically iterate on it. Um, but uh, where was I going with that? Uh, yeah, so the 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 other two uh, raids two and three got a lot easier to get those uh, to get those reclears. That minimizes or like that that. Yeah, minimizes the impact of bad picks. Where was I? Hero crawling? talents. I mean, is that going to that going to affect? Uh, is it going to be my worry with hero talents more than anything else? Because I, you know, they were very easy to identify as like the thing that might be shit about about uh, war within that and delves, right? But no one's going to really care if delves are terrible. Everyone's going to care if hero talents are. And I just don't want to yeah. be that thing where it sucks all of the oxygen mm. like out of the room and it's all anyone wants to talk about and it's all anyone can. Like like flying in Ward or Covenants in uh, Shadowlands. Are we heading towards that? What what can we do to avoid that? Uh, hold that thought for one second because I need to go and, and get the kiddos. But you stick oh, around. Oh yeah, I'm only going to keep down for like another five you guys, minutes. You so, guys yeah, chat. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to bounce. Um, but thank you, Dan. It's always like thank such you. a pleasure to chat with you. You're amazing. It's great chatting with you. Again. Um, please, you know, tell tell the community how to fix hero talents. So we're, we're all counting on you. Okay. <laughs> as soon as we've sold <sighs> hero talents, Evie, that's it. We're fine. Yes. We're, 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 we're we'll we'll, 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 we'll yeah. be here till we <laughs> fix it. Um, I I I don't think it's too late to excise them from from one another. Um, I. I, I, I think the easiest way of fixing it would be to just like w would be kind of what you suggested, which is just go around the problem um, and and pull them pull them apart from each other, you know, make the uh, make the aesthetic pick and make the um, uh, the actual talent tree just sort of like two separate things. Um, and and that's not that's not necessarily like a satisfying uh, uh, way of doing it, but it would be a way of uh, it would be a way of doing it. Um, I I honestly think the bigger risk with hero talents is that I I, I think rather than saying that they're going to suck, would be just that they end up being a little bit lame. <laughs> right. Is is probably the bigger uh, the bigger risk. Uh, I don't think the thing is is that because going into hero talents they have been explicit about the fact that um you're not really like locked into it in any meaningful way you know it's not a covenant situation where they're going to start off with this like well maybe in the future we'll let you switch sure. or like if you switch there's going to be this whole like it's going to be a narratively weighty decision to switch which which really just translated into uh okay it will take you uh, all weekend. Like it'll it'll take you like three days of just degenerate play in order to be raid ready as as a night fay for for reset on Tuesday. Yeah. Um. Uh. That the fact that there isn't that imposition on it is is going to defang a lot of it like that that <laughs> that specifically generated a tremendous amount of the animus towards uh uh towards the um uh covenant choice system, yeah. was that it's like this you know that like 
sure by the end like because by the end of the expansion if you were a player who was willing to go through and level all of them by the end of the expansion it was it was just kind of trivial it was like it's like oh okay like yeah i can just a lot of grinding to get there though it was a lot of grinding to get there but by the end of it it was just it's like oh i'm gonna go do some pvp okay i'll just go over and and get it's like okay let me just flip to necro lord real quick oh we're going and doing like mythic plus all right let me grab night fey oh we're gonna go to raid okay i'll be uh i'll you know vent there um you know it was but there was a tremendous grind to get there and that was also like after multiple patches of concessions about like how when and and what was required in order to like do the switch in the first place um Hero talents isn't coming with that sort of front-loaded barrier, so I, I think kind of the worst-case scenario is that basically um, players end up with like the hero talent tree that they prefer and that they like sit in when they're in the capital city and they use it when they're out doing like solo questing and they will preferentially like constantly try to use it in like m plus and whatnot um and and then it'll come down to whether or not tuning forces them into the other tree but then if tuning does force them into the other tree they'll they'll swap when they need to they'll mm. resent it um <laughs> but they'll swap when they need to and and just kind of like live with it and then you know okay raids over immediately click back into night warrior or whatever and um you know dark ranger yeah uh, i think you're right i think that's the the, the biggest danger is that it's essentially just a a meh thing that people kind of roll their eyes at a little bit and yeah. just becomes a, a kind of a a sigh rather than and, a, and that interaction i think is really going to depend on the class like it's going to yeah. come down to class communities um because you know like some of the class communities what they're sort of being offered in like the naming and fantasy of these hero talents is wildly disparate from what other classes are are getting and like the choices that are being asked to being made so there's really only a handful of classes where they're like hey here's this thing you've wanted since like 1995 when you were 14 and playing warcraft 2 on christmas eve um you know like there, there's really only a few that are being like dangled that that intensive a uh uh intensive a bait that that it makes sense to have these really intense emotions about whereas i think for like like for death knight like sure rider of the apocalypse sounds super badass but like what's the actual sort of like emotional weight of sure. like no, no no i want to be a rider of the apocalypse you know like no one's really like ride or die for it in the I same know, man. way i'm pretty and- ride or die for the ride of the apocalypse i you know I, my hopes are incredibly high i don't know what i want from it but all i know is that I, well, what is it even gonna be i, I want right. to literally yeah. change the color of the screen or something i like just sort of anything right. i want fire to happen when i walk and it's angels to sing and then die yeah. everywhere i go right but like i'm sitting here looking at my looking at my picks and it's like okay Qu- chrono warden which we've gotten the preview of and then um uh, scale commander which is the the pick that i haven't seen the option for yet and it's like do i really deeply care like what's what's going to be even sure. you know like what's going to be the aesthetic overhaul there is there a meaning like will it even be like an observable aesthetic overhaul or is it purely going to be like okay my dash works differently now like is yeah. that going to be the main sort of substantive thing behind that choice um and so i think a lot of the classes like and and even just specs within classes are not confronted with this like the are not confronted with this like uh, uh, dichotomous choice in the way that that a few specific specs are yeah definitely and in many ways i'm kind of pleased that my spec isn't really as well i think if, if i was hanging on for something like the dark ranger um the way hero ta- what hero talents are can only be disappointing for them um yeah. do you think the game is too bloated do you think it's too difficult for new players to get into it yes and no 
Um, I think MMOs as a whole, uh, so I've played a lot of different MMOs, um, and all of them are very front loaded. Uh, all of them struggle with how to onboard players into their, their end game. Um, every single one has just kind of this, like the, this almost gulf between the leveling experience and the end game experience. Um, I think the one that has handled, like that has managed it the best as it's aged is Guild Wars 2. Uh, the, the leveling experience into the end game experience is, is very smooth, um, is, is, is quite well done, but even then it's like, it is, I know it is still a very opaque game with a lot of like hidden decisions or decisions with like really kind of obfuscated consequences to them. And you may not feel those consequences for, you know, hours after you've, you've made those decisions and you might not have picked up on the vocabulary necessary to like ask other players how to fix what you're feeling like you, you you pick it up like from the feel of playing the game where you're just like there's something about how i'm doing things where like i feel really fragile you know i can kill stuff but like if i pull two things it gets kind of hairy and if i pull a third thing i just kind of fall over and that doesn't feel right because like earlier in the game i wasn't having those problems so what's changed because this has been a gradual thing over like you know four five six hours of gameplay um so so all of these mmos like they they have that it's it, i don't want to say it's inherent to the genre i don't want to say it's like unsolvable but it is it is definitely like endemic to the genre mm -hmm. um and i think with that like by acknowledging that there is sort of this like filter of like well players who are interested in mmos as a genre are going to tend towards being willing to like willing, you know, they're, they're going to expect and accept that there might be those kinds of things and that they might need to like seek out other information that the, that the genre just might be like dense. Um, and go further, I would say that there's an argument that kind of that extra homework and, it being appeals a kind of a puzzle to, a lot of to solve is, is one of the the base appeals of the genre, you know. Yeah, at tons and tons of players, like that's what draws them to it. That's what keeps them engaged with it. Um, and and so that's a really like that's a really delicate balancing act. I think your uh, your brand new player experience um, can't like it's it's almost going to come down to a roll of the dice of like what class and what spec you pick is sure. going to have this really really dramatic impact on what that ends up like looking like what that ends up feeling like because you've got some classes and specs where they give you your core tools in the first like 40 minutes of play and they introduce those tools in sort of like an order of like, okay, here's your thing that you use to build points. Here's your thing you use to spend points. And then when this lights up, uh, you make things explode. And it's like, and those, those are your three buttons. You, you just, you hit these three at the appropriate, uh, in the correct order and and you're good and then everything else that you're going to add on to that is just other stuff you can do but it's never gonna you're never really going to stray from these three buttons uh and then you've got specs that don't get core abilities until like their 40s uh they get abilities in their 50s that just completely alter the way that the spec plays and then you've got something like evoker where you you do uh forbidden reach no banished uh, reach uh oh forbidden reach, Upper is, reach, the, is, outer forbidden reach. reach is, is exiles reach is the new player island forbidden reach is the uh forbidden the reach island. is the yeah, yeah. yeah um you you do forbidden you you know you get your uh 
<laughs> You've only done you, it you six get, times at this point. I've only Dan, done it. Yeah. I've only done it a whole bunch of times at this point. It's like you, you get. It's like okay, you get living flame. You get disintegrate. You get a heal spell. You get. Uh, you get your breath. Uh, you get your breath weapon. Uh, you finish Exile's Reach. Here's. 50 talent points to spend oh and also in the middle of that you basically learn dragon riding as well it's like here's oh yeah you, you learn the dragon riding the twirl so, and stuff so exiles reaches uh forbidden reach is going to work like really well when when they like move drakthir back down to being just like a regular uh uh, a regular spec where it's like you get out and it's like congratulations you're now level 10 yeah. and then like everything else sort of like flow. but at, right now you know there's actually a really funny thing so like they went back and changed the the spec decision quest so that you can choose augment and they changed the quest text to acknowledge that oh, wow. like to acknowledge that augment is an option but then um uh they didn't re like and i don't blame them for this but they didn't then re-script the the actual like quest mechanics of like the follow-up to that because like the the quest mechanics are like okay you either heal a bunch of npcs who are fighting baddies or you kill baddies and so your original decision is between you know devastation kill baddies preservation heal npcs uh now you can choose augment which just really kind of puts you on the dps track yeah for like kill baddies but your you can't put your buffs on the NPCs. NPCs kills don't count towards your bar tracking. Your heal spells are on like a really long oppressive cooldown, and you've only got the one, uh, aside from like living flame. Uh, and you don't you don't have eruption. You you don't you don't have your core damage dealer. <laughs> You don't have your core spender, your 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 core power ability. So like, so you're just kind of sitting there on these like really long timers, just slowly, slowly chipping stuff down because because your like a, a core ability to the spec is like just two points down on the uh, on the on the talent tree. Like you can't you can't get it, and you don't technically have talent trees. But then like you leave the reach. And again, like you leave the reach, you do your like, it's like, go to the bank, go to the portal room, go to the, go to the auction house, go up and talk to, uh, your dragon, choose your, uh, choose your visage form, uh, boom, suddenly you've got just like these piles and piles of talent points. And it's like, you're literally just being handed homework of yeah. like, of here, here's now 50 talent points to, uh, to spend. Um, I hope, I hope you did your research because you can't, the, you, you don't get the opportunity to feel this out. Um, I, f I feel like, um, uh, augmentation being made to feel like an afterthought and not quite belonging in, in the environment and just having to sort of cope with the fact that everyone hates them and it's used. I think that's preparing you quite well for life as a, an it is, organization. Focus. It is kind of preparing you. Yeah. Um, leveling like, and I can talk about leveling as augment cause I, I did that for one of them. Um, I love the, I, I love augment. I actually like do. I enjoy playing it. I think it's a very interesting addition to the game. I'm going to be very sad when it gets when it gets <laughs> dumpstered uh, and and just turned into uh, into uh, uh, earth flavored devastation. Um, but I, I I don't know. I kind of feel like that's just I I have felt since since minute one that that. I am riding a sinking raft. Like the moment, that, like that there is, there is one dev, there is one dev on the team who, who has enough clout that they're like protecting augment and being like, no, we're going to ride it out. We're going to see, like, we're, we're going to see how this plays out. We're not going to make rash decisions. We're going to commit to the bit for, we're, we're going to keep committing to the bit. And, and they are basically like keeping it safe. And then the moment that they, switch teams move on to another company retire whatever it's like next patch augment is just going to be like it, it's just going to be you you increase your party's dps by one percent 
uh and and here and you know it's just going to be a very very cool down based uh uh damage spec and it's going to lose everything that's cool about it and interesting and i think you're and, right i i think uh, i think it's um the way i think of it is it's like it's like we're going to a party and you know evie warned me that those shoes don't look very good and that they don't fit me very well and I'm like, y y y we shut up. It's fine. These are awesome shoes and they, they're very comfy, actually. And they're very fashionable. And then I get to the party and they're incredibly uncomfortable and I really want to take them off. But I can't possibly let Evie be that right and, and to be that right. wrong. So, like, I grimly kind of hang on and stay uncomfortable for the, the length. Even though I still think they look very cool. You know, I'm 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 uncomfortable. I'd rather not be in yeah. them, and I I would just take and them off. But I'm gonna I'm gonna wait until the end of the party, and then I'll just quietly never wear them again, sort of thing. It's the yeah. double down, yeah. Yeah. So so augment has been wildly disruptive. I don't think it's a bad spec. I don't think it's a bad addition. To I the enjoy game. playing I think, it certainly. I think it's a really fun spec. Or can be a really fun spec. Um, uh, but but it is. It has been undeniably disruptive. In, in no small part because as has been endlessly litigated like it's the only pick for that kind of, for that like sub role um yeah and and like how okay like are <laughs> the whole thing with uh with oracle like oh are they gonna are they gonna just like embrace this and like it's like yeah no we're gonna use hero talents we're gonna create more support support specs we're gonna like we're gonna spread the og love around <laughs> we're gonna you know, like, are they going to commit to that? Are they not? Like, what's gonna what's gonna happen there? And I I think the fact that they've been a little bit agey on whether or not the Og philosophy is gonna spread is uh, is, is I think I think I think contributing. The people are being held in tension. Yeah, yeah. You'd see you'd see more specific support specs cropping up for the war within. I think if uh, if that was actually the case, I feel like the going into the next expansion and and kind of the announcements and certainly the the reveals of, of hero talents that would have been the time to be like, oh, this class now has a support spec. This class now has a yeah. support spec. and it's not yeah, it's not a hero the, talent for disc or holy. Like it's it's the, a support like it's a whole new spec, and we're giving them to like three other classes, and you know this is a thing now. And the fact that that hasn't happened would, <laughs> the, yeah, the writing would appear to be on the wall for support as a as a concept. I think. So I'm I'm very glad that I. There's sort of this like feeling inside of me that, like I'm very glad I got to be here for this like <laughs> phase there. where where augment was was just like at its rawest most insane uh, version. You know, it's it's kind of like when when paladins get to reminisce about being able to build retribution stacks yeah. until they could like one shot bosses. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, I'm glad I saw it with my own eyes because no one would ever believe it. <laughs> um, uh, I don't want to keep you um, uh, much longer, but I just want to. Uh, uh, there's uh, uh, a couple of super chats that we got. One from um, Mego, who who you met at BlizzCon as, yeah, as part of hey. our posse, just uh, saying hello. Um, and uh, she, oh, she talks about you all the time. Gets old actually. Uh, and <laughs> uh, and um, uh, also from Dragnosi as well. Uh, so will Chris Metzen fly in Cape and all and resurrect the now dead war with an expansion, or are we all doomed to Shadowlands 2.0? So I, I like in terms of just to kind of finish off your optimism about the game going forward. Obviously, since BlizzCon when we last spoke, uh, we've had some updates uh, with. Um, Steve the News are leaving the team, and, yeah. and and it is very much which we which we've been sitting on since November. <laughs> Some of us more successfully than others, it has to be said. Um, but yeah, uh, finally, um, I, would you believe it? So it I was, all, I I was streaming, and people were like, "What do you think about the news?" I'm like, <laughs> "Well." <laughs> Some people noticed that he wasn't around at BlizzCon, so this yeah. is not a surprise. To, yeah, I I had a very bad poker face for that stream. Yeah, no. It was, uh, anyway, it was, sorry, I it interrupted. Was a lot. You. No, um, but uh, now now that it kind of is out in the open that um, uh, it's it's Metzen and Gregory. That's it. That's the dream team. That's that's what it yeah. is. And 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 you know, how how do you feel with everything that's happened since BlizzCon or not happened? 
um, about the World Soul Saga now and, and kind of like the war within and, and the direction of the game. I'm still like incredibly optimistic about everything weirdly and and i'm 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 actually like the more i think about it the more excited i get something i was going to touch on earlier sorry i just got to get this out of the way uh i don't know if you picked up on this but there is stuff happening in 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 season of discovery that links into zalatath and links into kind of titan prisons and things like that and so playing with this idea of you know we're putting story that is building up to the war within and we're putting it in season of discovery, and I love that. I think that's. I, I think you know, that's. It's, it's quite I, mild. I think that's but, interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's it's they're they're keeping it con- uh, they're keeping it pretty constrained. They're keeping it to stuff that can spread very easily. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that they're putting it into a video game rather than a book m- means that it will just inherently have better coverage um, and better penetration. Um, sure. You know, t- to the degree that that WoW is able to get even like 5% penetration on their, uh, on, on lore in the first place. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I remain optimistic that the world soul saga has not been renamed like the fell corruption of, of fell corruption. Um, so, you know, we, we can make fun of Metzen's, uh, we can make fun of Metzen's sort of like quirks as a writer for, um another 20 years but uh well now we've got the opportunity to as well right <laughs> and now we, now we have the opportunity uh you know i i i think we'll see a lot of mets and tropes but you know they they lovingly got us here in in the first place anyway so um I, I, I kind of just have a lot of my, I have a lot of the same reservations that, that I had back around BlizzCon. I feel like the war within is still not really getting a chance to flex its identity in the way that I think it kind of like deserves. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing that they've been focusing on basically labbing hero talents with the community like i don't think that that's a bad thing but i think the sort of narrative pitch of war within is is still a little bit a little bit absent maybe i wouldn't feel like i probably wouldn't feel that way if i were a bit less disconnected um like if i were if i were in a phase where like my wow consumption was like very arm's length you know, logging in once or twice a week in order to just sort of like check in on things and then, uh, and then going and like just doing something else, um, and not really paying, like not reading the blogs, not watching the videos, then, then I don't think I would notice that absence at all. You know, the, it it wouldn't be until probably like late spring that I'd start being like, wow, they really haven't started, like they haven't started hyping it up yet. Like what's going on. So I think we're still well within the, the range where like, it's not weird that they haven't, uh, that they haven't started ramping that up. Um, other, other kind of like surrounding stuff. I'm, I'm profoundly disappointed at the dissolution of the, uh, the, the GM, um, department. Like that was both, uh, kind of like the there's a there's an element of it that goes beyond just the fact that like a lot of people lost their jobs it's the jobs that it's, it's the very specific type of job that that was lost and the work that was being done that did in fact like make wow um unique and better as a product um that that you had this like internal department for customer service that had a, a, a deep knowledge about not just the game, but the ways in which players interface with the game, the expectations of the community, the community's internal language and grammar of how it like talked about the game and what it expected to like yeah. get out of it. That sort of implicit like, okay, how is this machine supposed to behave? That is very difficult for someone to communicate in a support ticket when they're like bent out of shape because it broke yeah um that that the the gm department had that knowledge of player expectation and community that made them able to respond and do their jobs in 
a way that was exceptional. And losing that, losing that expertise, losing that, I think that does damage to the fabric of the company. Yeah. Um, I think that was a, it, it was a bad choice. It was a wrong choice. Microsoft shouldn't have done it. And there will be like, there will be hidden consequences that will not become apparent for years. That, lead, um, that makes me think of something that I, I've often wondered actually, uh, is, you know, I, I feel like, um, we've got fairly similar politics. I'm not going to talk about that really, but like, um, there's this thing where, so much of your content is based around to, to, to boil it down to its least delicate pointing out bullshit and 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 warning people about it as well um it, with your most recent work as well whether it's kind of taking on and analyzing how someone becomes like a flat earther and where that comes from and what makes them kind of stick to that or you know your more recent work with nfts and and uh web3 and stuff like that and you know, having this game that you love and that you you want to be good and that you are willing to be good and that you 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 want to consume and enjoy as Blizzard and the gaming industry in general has become like worse and worse and more abhorrent and and as you get older you notice how the mechanics of it work more and, and stuff as well how do you how do you square that with with your other work and, and and with your other kind of the ways you live your life generally? I mean, it's 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 difficult to square. I mean, in, in part with gaming, like if you want to play any AAA game, you either need to just like suppress it entirely and and you know go on Twitter and rant about the woke karate, like ruining games by making Tifa's boobs smaller, um, or or whatever. Like you just become a like complete chud, uh, or you confront the fact that like these are complicated. Uh, th these are complex products that are made by uh, committed artisans who uh, are working within uh, a destructive and exploitative system. Um, and and you you accept that nuance and you grapple with it and you talk about it when uh, you know when appropriate and when opportunity uh, provides itself. Um, because like, they're not, they're not necessarily like unfixable problems. They're not necessarily like unsquarable, uh, circles, you know, you, that it is, it is well within the realm of possibility and, and very much within their power for Actibliz, Microsoft, King, Stony, Mr. Clean, Johnson and Johnson to, uh, <laughs> To, to treat their people with dignity and respect and and treat them well like that's not <laughs> that's not an extreme ask um they they can do it <laughs> they have the power uh you know that they have the power to to remove abusers from positions of authority they have the power to uh pay people enough that they can afford to live within you know an hour of work um you know to so uh i i think i i don't think that pressuring them in those ways like socially and whatnot is necessarily spitting into the wind the sort of like the the real tricky question is it's like well you're you're consuming a subscription product that involves giving them kind of like regular drips of money so is that undermining your own activism as you do it and i i don't know that there's a clean answer to like to to necessarily like square that um i think well, just don't play it. Like, just just kind of like talk about it, but it, but don't engage with it. Like, don't don't actually like do the thing. Don't play the game. Whatever. I I think that's kind of like a trite answer. Like, it's it's viable, but is it? I I don't know. It just kind of feels like walking away in a sense. Um, I don't think there's. I don't think that. 
Mm, that's mm, I don't know if I explained that as as well as I can. I feel like in what I just in the words that just came out of my mouth, I might have accidentally implied that there's like a moral high ground to playing WoW um, when when there's not. There, no, I, I, I don't I, think I, there's like, a. I, I always like I'm I'm happy to completely applaud anyone that stops playing for well, any reason. Um, but yeah. particularly any any kind of moral reason, and yeah, no, I, I I I think it came across what you were getting at for sure. Yeah, uh, I. It's an impossible question, which I apologize for. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of an it's, it's kind of an impossible question, and and that's good. And I think we need to like engage with that impossible question and ramble through it and ramble through it in public in ways that. Uh, express sort of the nuance of what we want from the world. Like I, I want WoW to be good and fun and a thing that I can come back to, and I want it to be an avenue of expression for, uh, for artists and writers who also want it to be. You know, they they want it to be good. They want it to be a thing that they can use to, uh put art out into the world via and uh and both of us you know people some people were really down on me for going to blizzcon last year they're like oh why are you supporting blizzard and it's like the main thing that i went for was the weekly reset live obviously um, well was weekly reset live and and then the second thing that I went for was was a chance to interact with uh, with you know the the employees and like meet them and and talk with them, especially since like I haven't I hadn't been to BlizzCon since you know the the last time I was just a I was just a Diablo podcaster um, and uh, with with like 300 subs and and this time it's like no I'm, I'm a youtuber who gets recognized and i was really interested in being able to and sure enough like a lot of a lot of the staff that i ran into like people who who write quests who script quests who build armor who you know design character options they were like oh i've seen your stuff i really liked what you said about this and you know, one that pumps my ego, and I love having my ego pumped Never because hurts. I'm I'm vain. Um, <laughs> and and two, like it's you know, the people who are building this are are people j just like us who are like they're trying to get by, they're trying to make something, they're trying to like do something fun and interesting and entertaining that that kind of like that that connects with people. Um, and it is unfortunate that in that all of us are exposed to needing to deal with these negative corrupting influences of the system that we live within and and you know what like maybe maybe, maybe the fell can teach us a little something about 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 labor organizing <laughs> and uh and 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 structures of like how a business can can operate towards the people who are almost just just by necessity of logistics um subordinate to others uh in in ways that mitigate the harms of those relationships um it's an incredibly complex subject with lots of nuance but i think what you're saying is uh, Chris Metzen's going to save WoW and everything's great now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's everything's great now. Things everything's being uh, being fixed. There's going to be no more. There will be no more fiascos. No more controversy. It's just it's smooth sailing. Thank just goodness. A, just I think we all deserve a bit of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and into the triumphant uh, the war within with its very very strong expansion identity at the moment. Uh, one thing I'm like um, quite looking forward to is is the fact that you know we've got all these patches still to come before the pre patch. Um, and there does seem to be the Dark Heart patch 10.27, which is, appears to be dedicated to kind of setting the scene for the war within yeah. and, and story in, in a way that we're not used to. So final question before we go, because I kept you far too long and I apologize for that, but you did have a lot of interesting things to say. So it's not entirely my fault. Um, the pirate patch, what's it going to be? What is it? Oh boy. Uh, 
pirate patch. I mean, <laughs> more layoffs. Um, <laughs> we all just pirate the game from now on. We all it's just private pirate the game from now on. It's gay. yeah, it's 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 like it's just gonna be a yeah. private server ISO. Um, <laughs> I I think it's going to be a uh, rolling world event. I think it's going to be it's it's going to be a world event that's going to uh, uh, it, it's going to be like dream surges, um, but it, you know, kind of um, or or invasions or whatnot. It's going to be another crack at sort of that thing. It's going to be much more widespread in terms of pulling players to locations um, outside outside Dragonflight and outside uh, just uh, Kalimdor, uh, uh Eastern Kingdoms. I think that's going to be probably like the thrust of it. It's going to be mostly happening in those locations, but then there's going to be some other stuff. There, I, I think they're going to experiment with kind of building off of uh, Love is in the Air in how do we move players around the world a little bit more. Yeah. Um and and I I think for people who play uh Guild Wars 2 you're going to see a lot of like influence in there sort of creeping in in the same way that like dynamic flight crept in. Um yeah, cuz I think everybody wants the world to feel a little more utilized as more than just uh more than just kind of like this grab bag leveling experience. Um and and everybody is sort of feeling this this sense of like, okay, having twenty years of content, twenty years of like terrain uh, assets built um, is is basically like a, a gold mine of locations and and work that has been done that can be like further built upon in order to in order to quickly create really satisfying high value uh, uh, high value content. Um, so I, th that, that's my guess is it's going to be kind of this, like it's, it's, it's going to be a world event that's going to be a, l a bit more spread out, uh, to, to try to both utilize dynamic riding, uh, as a means of getting people around and as an incentive to like, have people move around a little bit more. I don't know if it's necessarily going to like. Yeah, that that's that's my guess on it. Like it that's what likely, I think yeah. it's going to be based off of sort of what I see is like the design incentives and the things that they're kind of grappling with and and that they need to experiment with if they're going to uh if they're going to move uh move forward with that. And I think I had another thing to were within something related, I don't know. Well, we'll just have to have you back on the show at some time. Um, that, I mean, what you're talking about with the uh, with the world revamp and, and, and finding ways to live in the world could almost sound like it's been kind of playing on your mind as the topic for another WoW video on folding ideas. Is is that, are we ever going to see another WoW video? Like, it's been such a joy to see you cover the game on the I... channel. Okay, so so we have a work, we have a document open of just like what are we going to do for the twentieth anniversary? Like, are we going to do a yeah. thing? If we're going to do something, what's it going to look like? What would the subject be? You know, how what would sort of the take be? How long would it like? What what would it look like? Because um, I really want to do something for the twentieth anniversary, both as you know, in in this like conflict between business and art uh both because like one uh it's it's good youtuber practice to like look ahead at events that are coming and plan <laughs> subjects that relate to things that people are going to be talking about in order to like in order to do your job better um but then also it's kind of like you know it's like yeah like a, a, a tribute to this uh this thing that i have now like two decades of of history with Sounds good. Oh, I hope so. I I, I think that um, your classic video and 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 why it's rude to suck at Warcraft are two of the the most valuable videos in the space, and uh, two of the most interesting and entertaining videos in the space. And it's it's just great to have 
more stuff like that in, in WoW YouTube, basically. So um, thank you. And it's been an absolute joy hearing you talk about the game. Um, an open spot on the show anytime you want to come on, obviously, and and spout and get stuff off your chest. And I don't know, work on the routine, that kind of thing. You know, try out, try out new material. Try out, um, uh, yeah, bust out a tight five and, uh, yeah, yeah. and just, just work it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, please check out um, Dan Olson on Folding Ideas. Uh, just a, a, a wonderful channel. Oh, I, I I said you've done two uh, WoW videos. Of course, there is the Dark Moon Fair Q video as well, which is an absolute stone cold <laughs> yes, banger too. So it's, it's a trilogy right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks so much for coming on, mate. Um, and thank you. So uh, much thank you for to everyone me. who joined us for the chat as well. Uh, any kind of hints you want to give us to uh, the next video on on folding ideas, or is that always under wraps? That one normal normally I would I would just start rambling as as you saw at BlizzCon I just talked your ear off about gold for like two and a half hours over dinner um, when you're like what's the next thing you're working on <laughs> normally normally I just like spill the beans and will like ramble this one I'm keeping a little bit um, I'm keeping a little bit under wraps it just makes it all so, the more exciting but but <laughs> I've I've been uh, the teaser would be I've been building dollhouse furniture for it. Ah, and is this what your uh, recent beard growth is in, in aid of as well? Yes. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, the so it together, involves a like, mountain man it's beard like working and dollhouse I love it. It's uh, awesome. Um, thank you again for getting up so early and joining us and uh, letting us keep you and allowing you to do all the talking as well, which means a lot to us. Thank you. Uh, thank you to everyone in chat. Thank you to the uh, the super chats, everyone who sort of joined in the chat. Thank you to everyone listening on Spotify and Amazon Music and, you know, all those other things. Or watching uh, the VOD of this on our second channel, Taliesin Never Tell's second channel. Uh, from me, Taliesin, and Dan Olson, and Evertel, and my kids, so I can hear downstairs now as well. Cheerio. <laughs>